What's going on, my beautiful people? Welcome back to Let's Talk Relationships with me, Lady CEO, aka Lady Love, aka Queen X. Thank you for tuning back in. So, this week on Let's Talk Relationships, we are going to be getting into the passing of loved ones and not being able to speak your peace or rectify issues before they pass on. Um, Particularly, we're going to be talking about the relationship between you and your parents. Okay, very important here. And today's title on Let's Talk Relationships is Making Peace Before They Pass. Yeah. So, um, first and foremost, before we even get into the the conversation um, today, you might want to get you a little drink. Uh, because I know talking about your parents and talking about these type of things, whether they're whether they are still here with us or they have passed on, it can be kind of difficult. And sometimes a lot of us are fighting through, um, you know, a lot of turmoil. A lot of us are fighting through a lot of trauma in the event of still wanting to make peace. So I encourage you. Listen, I'm not trying to turn you into no type of drunk, but if you got a little wine, baby. Then go ahead and pour your glass Because tonight This this, this evening we're sipping on Shoe Crazy over here Shout out to Shoe Crazy um, I love this brand Okay, It's Sweet Bella It doesn't have all those other type of chemicals in it It is locally owned here in Richmond, Virginia um, That's all we use here on Talk of the Street Entertainment Network So if you ever If you ever viewed an episode Or um, what have you You saw Shoe Crazy in the building So I'm going to go ahead and pour for a little bit up in here. I'm gonna drop the link in the bio. Okay, little shoe crazy. Little shoe crazy, baby. Little shoe crazy. Okay. Uh, I encourage you to pour you son too. Okay, because the conversation needs to be had. Alright. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm not speaking from a place of um, total kumbaya. You understand what I'm saying? However, I am speaking of, uh, from a place of healing. I am speaking from a place of uh, reconciliation. I am speaking from a place of redemption. And I say those things because one thing I can relate to is that not all the time do you feel do you feel like making peace. Not all the time do you want to forget what someone has done to you to put you in a particular mindset that that has became unhealthy for you if we can be honest not all the time do we want to do that um but you know taking it a step further when we don't do that have you have you ever been in a situation where you know the universe gave you the opportunity to uh, rectify the situation it doesn't necessarily mean and rectification doesn't necessarily mean that you make peace to a degree that of you and that person being all buddy buddy or giggly giggly um, maybe y'all weren't friends anymore destroyed your relationship rectifying situations doesn't mean that you guys are supposed to be friends again or you call each other every day and so when it comes down to your parents it doesn't mean that you um, forget everything that happened but you forgive and not only are you forgiving for them you have to forgive for you the worst thing in the world is to have a situation tie its ends before you have the opportunity to grab control of it so you can make peace with it um what that what that looks like is a loved one passing away your parent passing away before you are able to make peace with what happened to you in your childhood or how you feel as though they were supposed to be there um not all the time you know are people going to say sorry not all the time so i don't want you to base your peace off of what the other person does or how the other person receives you um because nine times out of ten um they're not going to be ready to receive or be open enough to apologize to you know to see the situation from where you are seeing it in the moment that you're that you're living it i'm not saying that they never will i'm just saying don't put yourself in a predicament where you receiving um, closure or peace from the relationship between you and your your parent um, 
depends on how they receive you or if they're ready to apologize. Don't do that to yourself, okay? So, um, number one in, in making peace in, in your relationship with your parent um, before they pass, right? And I'm speaking from experience. My father has been passed away for, for three years now, um, four years now, going, yeah. And um, the Father's Day just passed us. And for me, it gets harder every year, but it gets a little easier too. And what I mean by that though, and in and, and my particular situation is that um, things are still happening in my life. I'm getting ready to get married in, in the fall. And so, you know, versus last year where it was just his birthday, it was just things happening, just Father's Day, my I miss my daddy type of thing. Now it's like, oh, I need my daddy. Like, you know? And so that kind of switches the emotional narrative from I'm getting better to mm, this year is not it. I, I feel a little worse. I feel a little worse. And I want you to know that that's okay. Um, more, import more importantly, um, when you find yourself in situations where you know how sometimes we sit in, in those emotions and um, if you're anything like me, you tend to ask yourself, why do you feel like this? Uh, anytime something is bothering me, I ask myself, why? Why is it getting to me in this particular way? Um, it's, you know, it's my therapy, my self-therapy. So what I realized is um, today little glimpses of what I wish our relationship would have been like, um, you know, really began to bother me. And it's because I love my dad. I miss my dad. Uh, but when I was a child, I really didn't see my father. We really didn't have the relationship um, that I desired as, as a kid. You know, I used to spend a little time with him here and there. I remember when I used to be in middle school, I used to get out of school. Um, I was a stepper, but sometimes I'd skip step practice and I'd go to my father's job just to hang out with him. And um, then I'd go home before it was time for me to be home from the after school program. But um, I always wished even then I always wished that our relationship was different um, I wish that he would have done more father-daughter things with me I wish he would have taken me places I wish we would have had those um, those uh, uh, uncomfortable conversations about boys I wish we I wish we would have had more of that allowing me to be his baby girl so now today um, well, I'm, I'm over 30, you know, um, and my father just passed a few years ago. And like I said, in my adult life, um, we were able to create some new memories. Um, he always had a cookout. My father was a bartender, so it was, it was all peace and fun. Um, the only thing that really uh, got to me, the only thing that really bothered me doing cookouts is that he was my dad. So he would be like, how many drinks you had over there? Don't be drinking no more. And I'm... The dad. Like, <laughs> um, so I, I say all of that to say that, you know, uh, he got to bond with my kids. He spent time with my kids. So I say all of that to say that um, even though I wish things would have been different in the past with me growing up, and I wish my father would have treated me like the, the daughter father ideal that I seen, um, you know, but and it didn't happen. So today, I, I kind of feel slighted sometimes because I don't have those memories or it took so long for us to um, build a, a relationship, period. But I have to, I had to begin to look at the cup as being half full instead of half empty. I had to take on, you know, the, the I had to be grateful enough to understand that, hey, yeah, I wanted it to be that way, you know, but it, it wasn't. And what is it today? Can I appreciate what it is today and um, really really sincerely um, appreciate what the universe had been giving me right then and there um, you know so I, I just ask you, you know first acknowledge the fault acknowledge the pain even if you can't tell them you know I know some of you may have missed the opportunity I'm so sorry um, if you hadn't if you didn't find some sort of peace before the passing of your parent I'm so sorry but you can still do that it may be a little difficult right now it may feel a little a little strange right now but you definitely can still do that because either way you have to make peace okay you have to make peace in this situation and come to terms even if it's if it even if it's some things that you're like you know what this I wish this would have been different in my childhood or I wish my parent would have been here in my childhood and they won't 
Okay, make peace with that because you're grown now. So be the example that you would have wanted to see in your children's life, or maybe um, you know encourage another brother or, or another mom to um, you know do things that you believe would have been beneficial had your parents done it for you when you were growing up. Okay, but you have to acknowledge the way that you feel so you can understand it and 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 know how to attack it. Right, so it won't get the best of you because we don't want to stay there in that turmoil. We don't want to stay burdened. We don't want to stay in pain. We want peace. Right, so that's what we're aiming for, making peace before they pass. Okay, so um, also I encourage you to take note of how you would have wanted it to be. Nothing more um, important than manifesting what it is that you actually want. We we spend too much time as humans thinking about the things that that are going wrong. We ponder too much on what could happen instead of what's happening and instead of what what, what we want it to be like and, and that's a huge part um, of, of what I teach during the week on Mondays if you follow me on Facebook I, I do or Zoom um, and you can also find the videos right here manifesting Mondays on Mondays I teach classes on how to manifest your ultimate desire in your life and careers and so here today I want to Im imply a little bit of that here when you manifesting anything in your life you you speak it you speak it into existence you visualize it you work for it and then you watch it manifest in your life and so as it pertains to um, making peace with your parents before they pass um, or making peace with them if they're already gone and you are not satisfied with the way things were in your life then go ahead and begin to manifest that peace in your in your soul in your body so take note of what you would have wanted it to be like and here's what you do with it if you can't put yourself in a, if you can't put your parent in a position where it gives them the opportunity to to at least try to be that for you now then you have a greater opportunity opportunity which is to pass that knowledge down to your children or give it to your your friends or family that you see who may be lacking in that type of area but if you can't receive it then you know the universe is ult ultimately wants you to be the example of what it is you're asking for what it is you would have want to see but but listen the best way that you can make sure that a certain type of energy, a positive energy, is reciprocated in the universe as if you put it out there. And you got to put it out there from a clean heart. You really got to make sure that you mean it. Even It doesn't matter if you still feel hurt or you still feel pain. It matters if you mean that you want restoration. If you, if you mean that you want change. If you mean you want to make peace. And you can fight through any current emotion that you're going through to reach your end and result. Okay, now um, next, you know, as much as possible, I know this can be kind of hard, so I'm going to take a little sip. This can be kind of hard to do, but as much as possible, try to find compassion enough, be compassionate enough to understand what they may have been going through. Meaning, why they weren't able to give you the type of um, experience you were hoping for as a child. You know, you really have to, sometimes it's not about, sometimes, you know what, a large percentage of the time, it's not about, um, you know, what that person should have known better or um, what they could have done better. It's, it's it, a large percent of being compassionate is that person just didn't know. You know, that person, they were going through their own things and you may be, in today's time, you may be strong enough, strong-willed enough to get past those things that you that you see, but you don't know what type of mindset they had. You don't know how strong they were. You don't know all the uh, factors that, you know, all the, uh, the, the, yeah, the, the 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 factors that were that were taken into place when they made a decision or they made a move, and although you know, after analyzing those things, you're like, you know what? No, <laughs> that's still not an excuse, and you very well could be right. You could be very. You can be absolutely right about it being no excuse still, but you have to understand that that was them, and that's the choice that they made, and they had to suffer through reper repercussions, and one of the repercussions is that you feel the way that you feel, whether they know it or not. 
you feel the way that you feel, and that's one of their repercussions. So, you know, we have to take into consideration, though. I, I want you to understand that that takes compassion to, you know, lower, lower yourself, bring yourself low enough to have the understanding of what someone else may have been going through. And even if they failed, even if they didn't do you right, even if they projected some type of negative energy, it's always a root cause into why a person does a certain whatever they do or act however they act. It's always a root cause. And unfortunately most of those causes begin in traumatic situations. Maybe there was some tr trauma in their life, and this is the way they learned how to deal with the situation. And when it came down to you, maybe they didn't know, you know, they didn't get, have enough education or learn enough lesson, or, you know, they didn't have someone that was able to guide them through certain situations in life. And unfortunately, that spilled over into you guys' relationship. But what I'm telling you right now is it's important that you take the lead. Okay, so if you're in a position where, you know, because I had to go through this a lot with my mom, um, I always felt like uh, when I was younger, I felt like I was I was the grown up and I had to like steer my mom into places being so young. Um, and now in today's time, as I'm an adult, I see that that's okay. That's okay. So I'm telling you that even if your parent fell short and you're like, no, you're supposed to just know how to be my parent. You're supposed to just, why would you even bring kids into the world if you wasn't? Listen, people mess up sometimes. People mess up big time sometimes. And you're not the judge of any of this. So I say that in your best interest, it's, it's, it's in your best interest to develop that compassion, to, to gain that understanding, to try to figure out, it, don't, you ain't got to pry so much, just, just have a little bit more compassion. And I'm not saying that you have to find that they're right within you being compassionate for them. Maybe they're still not right, but at least you know what caused them to act that certain type of way. At least you know now, and that would take a little bit of pressure off. That would definitely, definitely take a little bit of pressure off, right? And um, so, talking about making peace before they pass. If you're just seeing this, you're just tuning in, then listen, we on to something right now. It's getting a little hot up in the room because right now I know a lot of y'all, you you going down memory lane. you shadowing. you like, you know what? No, because that wasn't right. And I'm mad as hell because of this. And no, like just no. Well, I hope this video softens your heart. Because you stumbled across this video because you deserve peace. You deserve peace. And as much as this sounds like it's about someone else, this is about you, fam. This is about you. And you reaching your next level. And you receiving the healing that you need. You. This is about you. So you can stop the cycle, break the cycle, break the curse of confusion amongst your children and your children's children. This is about you, fam. This is about making peace before they pass. Or even if they passed already, you got to make peace so it can pass. Okay? And all right, so next, um, start from where you are now. You know, we've talked about acknowledging the pain and the fault from the past. We talked about taking notes about how you would have wanted it to be, um, how you, you know, how you wish the relationship, if it's current, something current, how you wish it would transform now. You could talk about how you wanted it to be back then. Create a list so you can start to see these things. But mo the the, mo the most important part is edifying what you want in today's time because that's what a manifestation is going to take place at the manifestation cannot take place in the past <laughs> okay it cannot take place in the past y'all okay um so starting from where you are now as it as it um you know concerns moving forward whether your parent is still here and so you're able to talk to them about certain things like i said do not expect for them to receive everything you're saying okay let's take into consideration that some people don't like to hear where they're wrong at and that's not where we're coming at we're coming for ourselves so you have to have some type of peace already before you start being like, hey, listen, I just want to talk about this. This is how this made me feel back then. It may be a little tears coming back and forth. That's because you're releasing, you're birthing a new you. And don't be afraid of that. Okay? Um, but definitely you have to start from where you are now. You can't go back and be a kid again, sis. You, you just can't. 
He can't p pick you up and put you on the sh pick you up and and sit you on his shoulders, bro. You can't. You, he just can't. They just can't. Okay. So we have to go from where we are now. How would you want? How you want this relationship to be now? It's so important. So important. No longer look at the glass as being half empty. We have to start looking at it as being half full. Okay. And um, now this this one is for if you're if you're uh, if your loved one has passed already. Your mom or your father has passed already. As I told you. The, the few days that, that has went by, I, I did, had a birthday. The day after was Father's Day. And in the next seven days, it's my father's birthday. <laughs> okay, I'm going through it. And I'm getting married in October. So all of these emotions are like very, very new for me. So I can relate. They're new all over again. I'm at a new level in my life. And I'm like, oh, I want my daddy to go to the new level. And he can't. He can't, fam. He can't, fam. But those are just my feelings. So I'm telling you that it's okay to feel what you feel. It's okay. It is okay. You will never get over uh, losing your parent. You will always feel like a piece of you is missing. Okay? What's most important is making peace with you guys' relationship. That's why we talk in relationship here. Okay? And if you, like I said, if your loved one is passed, I was trying to find... And, you know, some different things um, to get back into the swing of things when it comes down to what my father was interested in. And so my fiance, I was talking to him and um, I'm like, you know, I just I just miss my daddy. I just I just miss my daddy. He was like, well, you got to find something to um, honor him. You got to what, what what did he what, what did y'all used to do? And um, I told him what I remember most about my father was that he always cooked out. It was always a grill burning. It was always a grill burning. If you rode past his house, it was always music playing. Um, you know, he started asking me questions because my fiance is just like me. Make sure you tune in to Legacy Internet Radio on Tuesday nights at 8.30 p.m. where we have relationship talk with the Joneses. Um, we talk about couples and relationships and different things like that. Um, but he's amazing. And he's like, well, well what, kind of, what kind of food he used to cook? What's the number one food? And I'm like, five fish. She's like, okay, well, we're going to do cookouts, okay, on his birthday to honor him. And we're going to do cookouts, and we're going to always have fried fish. And that was, I'm trying not to be emotional right now. Um, but that's exactly what what you have to do. Um, you, you find something about them that you can celebrate, you know, no matter how small it is, no matter how quirky it is, um, no matter how much they got on your nerves, you're... You're right here in this place right now because you wish it would have been different. You wish something would have went a little bit more different. You wish you could have honored them more. You wish you could have laughed more with them. You wish that you would have had more time. Woo, that's the biggest one. You just wish things were different. But the only thing that you can do is make peace. Make peace peace with those emotions find the joy within those emotions and, and make sure you celebrate that celebrate what was instead of what wasn't right that's what it's all about so before we go, I want to read you this verse um, that comes from the Bible in Proverbs 13, 22. And I'm going to read you the Amplified Version because I think it's important, okay? It says, Proverbs 13, verse 22 says, A good man leaves behind an inheritance of moral stability and goodness to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner finds its way eventually into the hands of the righteousness for whom, for whom it was laid up upon. Okay? So that's Proverbs 13, 22. All right? The point, the gist of that is that inheritance, inheritance of joy and peace and stability, prosperity and abundance in all its forms has been laid up for you. Okay? And even if your parents didn't put you in a position for you to acknowledge that, for you to work in that, then it's your job to make sure that your children's children or your nieces and nephews or your cousins are able to understand what's happening here. And you're able to project this sense of peace throughout your family and friends. Because now that you know how to make peace with your relationship with your parents, your mother or father before they pass, or you can even take this information and make peace with them right now. Pass this on to somebody else. Okay? So, 
This has been Let's Talk Relationships with Lady CEO. Make sure for my couples that are looking at me right now, make sure you tune in to Legacy Internet Radio where we do some couple counseling. Counseling, love counseling with the Joneses, y'all. You already know I'm Lady CEO. I'll talk to you next time. Keep your relationships healthy.